Here are five home studio upgrades that I didn't know I needed and why you should probably consider getting them yourself. Starting with number one, lighting. Now I know what you're thinking. Lights have nothing to do with the sound that I'm producing in my studio. So how does that make me a better musician? I'm gonna tell you the truth, buddy. Vibes. <laughs> um, so we have here the lights that I invested in, the Young Yuo YN360. These are the first generation lights of this kind. I wouldn't recommend you buy these unless you wanna save an extreme amount of money but I don't even think they're available to buy anymore. Well, the reason I love these things so much is because number one, they're very affordable. Even the newest version, I think it's the version three or four, whatever they're at now, is around $79. Three different color modes. There's green, there's blue, and there's red. And this will turn up the intensity of that color. And you have regular like, Oh, I'm legally blind. Now, as you can see, I have two of these. One is doing the green here. This is kind of like a little accent light. And then I have the second one here doing a nice, bold, orangish red glow that I love so much. So in case if you needed any proof, just real quick, we have our orange light, one key light. I'll actually turn that off and then check this out. Boom. Maybe I want to write a love song. Let's go full on red, full on red. We'll change this purple. Ooh, that's like... Valentine's, I'm about to make love song. You know what I'm saying? This article even says, how room designs affect your work and mood. Brain research can help us craft spaces that relax, inspire, awaken, comfort, and heal. So what I want you guys to think about is how does your studio reflect your creativity? 5 p.m. somewhere, right? <laughs> Aside from my two accent lights, I have my main light here, which is the Nano Leaf light panels. Reason number one I like these, obviously, is because I can use my phone to turn them on and off. Turn my lights down to 20%. What you will find interesting is that these can listen to the audio or music that you're playing in your studio and animate depending on the audio that it's hearing. And that's why you want some nano leaf lights. But first, you should probably get in shape. Oh Lord. Next up, hold on, stop a second. Before we go any further, just please leave a like down below. I shouldn't have said please. It sounds really begadocious. Just like the video, okay? You don't have to leave a comment if you don't want to. Although I would love it if you did. Just one tap. Thank you. These are the Godox SL60W. These are basically lights that I use to be the main source of light for any kind of shot that I'm getting. So that when I do post to socials, instead of it looking all dark and stupid like this, I look nice and well lit like this. One thing you'll notice about my studio that I still have yet to do is to soundproof the room. This is upgrade number two that you need. <laughs> and I can tell you why. You're in a tight space. A reverb is just... You f***ing moron. Sorry. There's a truck, big truck idiot who drove by and just had to rev his engine because he has a Lost my train of thought. Um, uh, see, now I can't even think. Yeah. Obviously there's plugins that exist that can eliminate background noises, that can clean up the AC in the back. But ideally, you want the best possible recording environment that you can possibly have. It's better to record in an environment where you don't have to cut these things out in the first place. Now, even though I'm no professional at sound treatments or soundproofing and things like that, I can for sure say that those Amazon cones and stuff that you guys keep buying from Amazon do not work. My whole studio is rumbling right now. There's a parking lot right below this. The right type of sound treatments that you would need is something that is very dense. So you wanna get these very dense foam panels or you can make them yourself that you can stick to the walls. They're like usually these rectangles. If you can't soundproof your stuff or, or sound treat your room, don't worry about it just yet. Go buy a Chaotica eyeball. You should be fine for the time being. Now for upgrade number three that you should be making in 2023 that is not a piece of music gear, it is a camera. So this here is my main camera. This is the Z Cam E2. All my cameras are Micro Four Thirds, so this is a Micro Four Thirds camera with the Voigtlander 10.5 millimeter 0.95 manual lens. It's great for low light, things like that. And this is a cinema camera that I use to shoot pretty much all of my music videos and the major music videos for other major artists that I work for in the music industry. If you have something as simple as a phone, my personal recommendation is going to be obviously an iPhone and any one of the iPhones that was released probably within the last 
last three to four years should be immaculate with video. The key thing is to be able to turn what you do into content. Because if you haven't noticed, if you are an artist and you're not on social media, there's pretty much no way you're gonna get seen by anyone because every artist on planet Earth is sharing on social media. As I just got out of three meetings with three different brands, they love the content that I'm putting out and it has helped me to garner more of an income from my art because let's be real, music is not paying musicians <laughs> in 2023, it's not. I had to monetize in another way. And what is that other way? Filming content. Now, this can be stuff that is meant for you and your own channel. Or if you garner up enough of an audience, you can start to do sponsored videos on your TikTok, your Instagram, your YouTube channel, like what I'm doing right now. This is what's earning me the bulk of my money. The next piece of gear I wanna tell you that I got to upgrade my studio is a little more of a geeky purchase and maybe kind of further off for you unless you're really into content creation. This is called a NAS, Network Attached Storage. About 80 terabytes worth of storage space that I'm using here to store all my video files, all my music files, all my music projects, every single thing that has to do with my studio, my art, my visuals, my audio is stored here. This is the main database of it all. Now I bet you're probably asking me, well, why do I need 60 terabytes of storage when I can just buy a ton of those little hard drives that have 12 terabytes at a time? First reason is because that stuff piles up. But the best part about this storage option is that it is network attached, which means it's connected to the internet, which means basically think like having your own iCloud or your own Google Drive without paying a $10 monthly fee or $20 monthly fee to access those files. Because what happens when you don't pay that money? But I'll make a full video on how to set one up later because it is quite a tedious process, at least with these folks. Last but not least, we have the MacBook M1 Pro. This is the one that I got for myself. This is not the max version. This is the mid-range M1 Pro MacBook, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte hard drive because 512 is definitely not gonna be enough for you. I can guarantee you that. And next, of course, you couple that with the Apple Studio Display, which is probably one of the best companion things that you can buy for your M1 MacBook. I don't know everything about this display, to be totally honest, but I am an Apple gearhead. I love Apple stuff. I'm an Apple fanboy, okay? Y you got any more of that Apple? But no, honestly, this thing, um, in addition to it being, I think it's like a 5K display, yeah. in the back, it has three USB-C ports and one Thunderbolt 3 port to connect to your computer. So I use that basically to hook up all of my hard drives with my sounds on it, with my video files on it if I need to, any other additional peripherals like keyboards, drum machines, things like that, that my audio interfaces that can't fit into the limited space or ports of my MacBook, I go through the studio display. Once you get your music to a certain level, you have to get your visuals to a certain level to match that as well. When you can marry those two and you can really dive into your audience and connect with people, you've got something you're on the verge of. I can't tell the future, but I do feel I'm on the verge of something. Do you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel the love tonight? <laughs>